Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. And I'm back with another Cricut project, no sew project, craft project. I'm going to be taking some fuzzy socks, some rice, a few bats and fall leaves that I've cut out with my Cricut and make some no sew Halloween gnomes today. Although the only thing Halloween about them is the adorable bats. Without the bats, they're just fall gnomes. So I thought maybe we'd change up this little vignette since I haven't changed it since Easter and get a little more in time with the seasons. So let's start by taking Easter down and we'll put Halloween up. We're gonna also go ahead and hop into the craft room, start cutting out those bats and fall leaves, and then I will show you how to make each gnome. They're really easy, really simple. This is definitely a beginner level project that you can adapt for any holiday, for any occasion, or you can just have gnomes. Like, that's good too. <laughs> All right. Easter's done.
All right, y'all. So now we have all our bats, all our different flowers and leaves cut out. And we are going to go ahead and make some Halloween sack gnomes. So you can make them different ways. I'm making a whole little family because I have one sock gnome when you can have a few. <laughs> and I like to make them all different shapes and sizes. This is actually a pretty easy project. And short of the black fuzzy socks, because I only have colorful ones, I already had all the materials. So I'm going to get started by filling our little sock with some rice. And for this guy, I think I'm going to do like 10 scoops. My biggest guy here is 10 scoops. And I want another big one. And then my other guys are eight and six scoops. Six scoops for the little guy. And this is actually a fourth cup, quarter cup measuring spoon. So not an exact science, but it's my smallest measuring spoon and I find that it fits in my sock pretty well. For the most part, when I'm not on camera, keeps me from spilling rice everywhere. So I did make some gnomes for Easter last year. And I made their hats uh, triangular. And this time I'm doing uh, sleeve cuffed hats that are a little slouch here. Yeah, rice everywhere. All right. Now, this is good rice. I mean, I could cook this for dinner tonight if I wanted to. So if I spill some, I try to put it in my sock since I'm not eating the sock rice. Although, you could. After Halloween's over, you could totally dismantle this rock sock and eat this rice too. I wouldn't, but you could. And once he's all in there, you gotta work all the rice down until you have what you want your gnome shape to be. And then I just tie a knot at the top of my gnome head. And for these bigger ones, sometimes you're okay. But for the smaller ones, there's usually quite a bit of sock left. And I just cut that off so that it doesn't stick out the top of my hat too much. If you're doing a cone hat, um, like the Easter ones, that's not a big deal. But since these are open on the top, can't see it from the front, but you can see from the top here, if I had left it too long, you would have been able to see that little guy. All right. This was a full bag of rice when I started, for reference. Sock gnomes are adorable, and rice isn't expensive, but it does, does take a lot of rice, so keep that in mind. All right, so this is some scrap pink fabric that I have that I'm gonna use for his hat. Best way I know of to do it here. I'm gonna wrap it around this way. I'm probably gonna use most of this side here for his hat. So I'm gonna wrap him around. And then I'm just going to mark here with my fingers where he hits and then cut a little, little bit past that so I can overlap him. And now I'm just gonna cut straight down the side here. And I may not, like, I'm probably not going to make this whole side a, a, a saw cat because that would be very, very tall. <laughs> Which, if you had a structured fabric or you put more rice in the top, I suppose, or something else in the top, that would be fine. But in this case, I will probably just use the other half and make another little pink gnome.
because you can never have enough gnomes. Or I could save it for a Valentine's Day gnome hat. All right, so since I want this guy to have a cuff, we're going to do that first. I'm trying to decide exactly how to do it. So I think I'm gonna because I typically would just roll it up here and then hot glue this down. But I don't want this to be the cuff. I want the fur to be the cuff. Well, let's see here. Let's just go ahead. And do it this way. Nope. I like this. So to make your cuff, just start in the middle and work your way across. And I'm obviously using hot glue, which is permanent. Don't have to use hot glue, you could use uh, thread. You could use super glue. And you just wanna make sure as you go across that you keep your line straight. And I'm sure there are better ways to make a no sew sock gnome, but this is the quick and easy way. And honestly, their gnomes, part of their charm is that they're imperfect and adorable and quirky. So I don't put too much into making them absolutely perfect. But I do prefer not to have yucky hair in them. All right, so now, why? It's trying to go in my gnome. We have two options. I can cut this even with the bottom here, or I can flip it over and glue it up on the back here, and that's what I'm gonna do. It will make a thicker cuff, which isn't ideal, but it will be more secure. And that's what I'm going for. Plus it'll give it just a cleaner edge. Make sure when you're holding it down, you don't stay on one spot too long or you will burn your fingers. All right, so this side you can tell is a little shorter. So be careful when you're doing the hot glue. Not trying to burn ourselves. All right, so now the cuff of our gnome is done. That will be the brim of his hat. Now, I think we're gonna go ahead and cut the top while it's like this. So let's see. This is him. I think we'll make his hat about this tall. And that'll leave enough for a little gnome on the other side. Try as hard as you can to make the top of your hat straight because this part will be exposed. Veering off a little. Can always straighten it up a little. There we go. Just a little off, not a lot. I always veer a little bit off course at the end. Perfect. 
And now we're gonna flip this guy over like this. And we're going to put a bead of hot glue all the way down and then fold this over, press it down, and that is the seam of our hat. Do it a little more like this. I think that'll be easier. Instead of trying to go all the way across in one go, we're gonna get the brim down really good and then we'll put more hot glue on to finish. Make sure to line up the bottom. Perfect. Press it down really good. If you want, you can wait until this step to cut your fabric off. And sometimes I prefer that because then you do get a much straighter cut across. But I also find when you do that, you use more hot glue. Isn't a huge deal if you are planning to use the other half for a hat, but still. It's easy enough just to do it this way. All right, y'all, I don't know if you've noticed, but it is getting dark, so we better finish up this gnome. Go make our dinner. Put our little hat on him. This guy still may be too tall. Oh, he's gonna be so cute. All right, so now, slouch it down, slouch it down. See where you want the top to head, and then if we need to trim some more, we can. Take a piece of string or thread or anything like that. Tie it around the top to make the top. Best part is just trying to keep it all even. There we go. I like to go around the other side and tie a knot. I don't know why, I just do. The tighter you'll keep it, the cuter it is. Not finish it off. And we're on to the beard and the nose and the bats. All right, so let's cut this guy a beard. He's gonna be so cute. So we've got our fake fur here. You can see where I've already cut a few beards. And the best way to do it is just gonna go around the front here and you wanna do about halfway around. And then I think that's gonna be about the top of this one, which is, should be right, because I cut it in half. I measured in half to make the beard for my other 10 scoop gnome. Right. I just try to get all the hair kind of going down so I can tell if I have enough. And then I mark where the bottom of the gnome is and where I want the bottom of my beard to be. So now I'm gonna start cutting. But when you cut for a beard, you want to move the hair aside and cut in the ditch here. And this helps keep the beard hair nice and long and gnomey. If you don't do this, then you'll cut all this part off and you'll end up with a very funky looking mustache of a, of a beard. So you wanna keep those ends long and cut in the ditch. So 
especially when you get to the bottom of the beard. Again, if that makes it a little bit funky, not a perfect triangle, that's okay. Surprisingly, beards don't necessarily grow super straight in the wild either. Wild bones and men, their beards are all over the place, right? I like to flip the cuff back. Make sure we're working on the front of the gnome. And just do a line of glue right under the brim of his hat because that is where we want the beard to be. And press it down all along the top here. And then we'll do the sides. And on the sides, I like to do some underneath. And on top, and this is twofold. It helps hold the hat in place. But I also find that some of these short pieces of hair on the side try to come off. If you glue them to the hat, they stay in place better. Flip them over to the other side. So now your gnome is basically done. This is your general gnome shape for any gnome you're making, whether he has a cone hat or a straight hat or a slouchy hat. We need one more thing and that's his nose. From here you can make him Easter or Christmas or Halloween or every day. You could have everyday gnomes. I'm making Halloween gnomes, so that means bats. Oh, he's gonna be so cute. All right, so I think for this guy, use maybe a felt black bat, and I'm thinking a purple one down here. Maybe some blue leaves, because I haven't done that yet dark blue ones. I've used the light blue ones. <sighs> okay, so now if we're doing a larger piece like this, I find it best to kind of lay it out before I glue it all together. That way I can make sure it's exactly how I like it. It is dark, y'all. I don't know when that happened. Okay, let's see about that. Is that enough? You know, I think that's enough. So now, go ahead and put a dollop on my bat, and I try to only keep it on the middle of the bat. 
because I like his wings to be movable. I know, I know. And then I'm just gonna figure out what needs glued down next and work my way across. that to my desk a little. That's right, that's why I have plexiglass on my desk. Whoop. Back down. Back down. Decide exactly where we want him, but I think I want him right above the brim here. So, I'm gonna put a little bit of hot glue across the whole back. And this also helps to hold all the pieces together. And we'll put him right over our brim. See how when you leave the, the wings up, they can kind of pop up and be super cute. It looks like he's flying. Yes, that was the goal. Oh my God. Definitely the best. I still wanna use this black one though. Maybe we'll put him on the hat. Got hot glue everywhere. Hope y'all can see. Maybe we'll do a little black with that. And up here. Yeah. Does he need a flower? He might need a leaf. Let's do a light blue leaf. No, I don't have any other light blue leaves on this guy. Let's do a purple leaf. They need to contrast against. Yeah, right like that. And then a dark Find it like this. Perfection. Dollop on the back of the bat. Dollop in between the purples. Sandwich time. Ooh, sandwiches for time. That would work. All right, and then we're gonna put this guy, I think, right here. The more you press him in, the more the little wings come up. And there you go. One adorable Halloween gnome. I will put some finished pictures and videos of all of them up tomorrow in the light. Thanks for hanging out with me on this dark and spooky video. <laughs> Sorry for the lighting. Thought it would be light longer. this like recently oh you know I did my entire laundry room cabinet build in here there was sawdust 
everywhere. If you haven't seen that video, I will link it down below. But basically, I have been dusting and shot vacuuming everything since then, and there's still sawdust on everything. One day I will have a shop. I cannot wait for that day. Till then. I just got this text tray and I'm pretty excited about it. They have little bats on them. It's not sure why they wouldn't for Halloween. Yeah, it's over here. Thinking I might be able to balance this little guy up here. It's just rice. Unfortunately, then I have purple and purple together. So let's put purple over here. Very can trail down that way. Let's keep it right in front of our little Eiffel Tower. What do you think? I think they're really cute. They turned out so much fun. I made a bunch of Easter no so gnomes last year. Easter. Um, so I will link that down below if you want to get a feeling of what they can look like for different seasons. I made those gnomes with cone hats and I made these with slouchy cuff kind of hats. I like both ways, but these are really fun. I think I'm definitely going to have to make more of these. I'm thinking maybe some winter ones maybe Christmas, maybe Valentine's Day. Leave a comment down below with what you'd like to see next. And if you liked this project, like, comment, and subscribe because I've got plenty more to show y'all. Bye.